So, gang, is working on your speed important all year round? Yes. Is it important in the summer base training phase when you're just either coming off a long year and you're recovering and getting ready for cross country? Yes, it is. Okay. I'm going to show you how I'm trying to break it down. I'm going to use a 12 week summer training cycle. Some summers are a little bit shorter, some are a little bit longer, but it's generally between 10 and 12 weeks. So I want to kind of break it down for you because far too often in my hearing, you know, coaches and athletes doing multiple workouts and they're starting their workouts in June, which really, really means it's, 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 it's well and all. And, but, um, last thing you want to do is be ready to run your best races in September and not October, November. So how to lay things out is important, right? What to lay out is important. Again, your coach, I hope you find this valuable. And the whole point of this is the goal is to help you find things that help you solve problems that you, you know, they might, they might arise because of whatever. And you never really know who you're going to be dealing with as a coach, especially when you have lots of different athletes. So uh, the more information you have at your tool, uh, in your weaponry on your tool shed the better or in your arsenal so and i this is stuff that i've used for two decades as a coach and a former competitive runner myself so and if you haven't subscribed to this channel please do i thank you okay and those that are subscribed i, I appreciate all your support and thank you for the kind words and your feedback and again you folks have direct access to me if you want to dissect any video on this channel black belt running coach at gmail.com is my email address okay so I'm happy to help. I'm happy to answer questions. Now, let's get into this summer base training. You're going to see some slides. They're going to pop up. Okay? And this is a key. The key, the key thing here. So, again, speed development during base uh, during your base training phase, which in, in our case, in most cases, it's summer running. So, some things to keep in mind, running in a lot of extreme weather, extreme heat. So, what you do is also important and when you do it. Okay? Now, I've always used this, and this is a rule of thumb. Use the first four weeks. To build towards your goal volume. So whatever you finished at last year, if you're staying there or you're going a little bit higher, break it down. Your first your first week, 25% volume. Second week, 50%. Third week, 75%. And then your goal volume at the fourth week. Without any, doing any speed development, just get adjust, get adjusted to the volume itself. More running, getting your joints and your ligaments and your bones and your muscles all ready to get fired up and um, bendy and, and mobile. So those are very important things as well. Okay, so... First four weeks building to the goal volume. Again, it's up to you to whatever you to do uh, as a coach, whether you feel it's something else is more appropriate. But I wanted to m recommend these things because these are things that I've done with success. So I want to make sure that uh, you know that these things are available and they are they are helpful. But you customize as you see fit. So phase two, let's just say weeks five to eight. I'm adding hill running and flat accelerations. This is where I start to incorporate the speed. Okay, and what that does is let's not, not uh, let you rebring a re uh, or return the speed that you've been working on last season, okay, and get it ready to transition forward, okay, potentially at an even higher level. This is where you work on your basic speed. So some hill running, good speed work for leg power, it's less invasive on the body, flat accelerations on soft surfaces if you have them available. Let's just say Tuesday, Friday, and that helps trigger turnover and leg speed, right? So these are important things. If you get soft surfaces, even better. Now, let me break it down. Week five, eight times 100 meter uphill on Tuesday. Eight times 100 meter flat on Friday. Okay, basic speed development. You can consider them strides on the flats, the uphill runs. You're leaning into the uphill, pumping your pumping your arms, and lifting your knees. Okay, obviously you won't be as fast as the flat, and that's okay. But you're focusing on driving, keeping your body upright, and driving up the hill. Everything's going to have a jog equal or walk equal recovery to get you come back. Okay, and obviously you can do this after a run. You can do this in between a warm up and a cool down, however you feel is most appropriate. But these are the components of speed development right now. Week five. Week six, I bump it up to 10 times 100 meter uphill on Tuesday, 10 times 100 meter flat on Friday. Two more reps. Now we bump it up to 150 meters. Week seven, eight times 150 uphill on Tuesday, eight times 150 flat on Friday. And then week eight, 10 times 150 uphill on Tuesday, 10 times 150 flat on Friday. Now you've gotten four weeks of pretty good speed development back in the legs without taxing your body because you're not doing crazy high volume. You're not doing hard 400s. You don't need to at this point or hard 800. You don't really need to at this point. Okay. The guy, the idea is to get you fitter each week and help you transition to a more intense phase, which is get you ready for hard cross country racing rather than having doing too much too soon and running your best weeks four to six weeks, running your best races four to six weeks early. So this sets you up to run your best when it counts the most. So that's week eight. Now week nine through 12. Now I can start incorporating things. Okay. Eight by 200 meter uphill on Tuesday, week nine, and then a tempo run. Let's just say it's two times 10 minutes of tempo with a three minute recovery. 
okay, at this point. Depending on where you're at with your coach in high school or college, it's up to you to, to decide where, what's most appropriate. But the tempo run on Friday, get the more aerobic component in here now to complement the speed. Now you're starting to really, really transition towards getting closer to racing. Week 10, 10 times 200 meter uphill, and then you do threshold reps. So let's just say you did two times 10 minutes at tempo. The threshold reps now can be, let's just say, five times at 1,000 for the one-minute recovery at threshold pace, which is essentially five to ten seconds per mile faster than your tempo pace, okay? Five to six threshold reps, okay? This is also a great way of getting fast by training slower. So week 11, eight times 150 uphill, kind of scaling it back a little bit, okay? And then your tempo run, let's just say it's 20 minutes consecutively now. So we progress from two times 10 minutes in week nine to 20 minutes consecutively now in week 11, Friday. And then week 12, 10 times 150 uphill, and then Friday threshold reps. So if you did five times a K or six times a K on week 10, then you can do five to six times 1,200 now on week 12. So and it's also set you up so that you continue the uphill. You're still doing speed development, but now you're you know, doing a little bit more of an aerobic component too. And, and one of the things I like to do, okay, is test my athletes at a mile. My college athletes or my older athletes, I test them at a 3K or a 2 mile. And that gives you an accurate indicator of what the fitness is, Okay at the time, their current fitness, after about six to eight weeks of preliminary base running. So then what, what that does is it makes it easier for you to set training paces for everything moving forward before even starting races. So that's a good thing too. That way your athletes are training at the right paces, which minimizes potential of sickness or injury or both. So, and it tells you how close, okay, what kind of groups do I have here? It lets you know exactly what you got to work with. So, which is another good thing. Okay, I got a group of five, group four, whatever it might be. And it'll tell you how close this group is to that group and when, you know, you might be able to transition one up a group and or if you need to manage it, transition somebody down a group. So it gives you a lot of intel. But this is a great way of kind of gradually putting forward speed development while at the same time transitioning into a little bit more of aerobic work while getting you ready to rock and roll during the season, during September. So, and you've done enough to this point where you're, you can race pretty well, but you haven't done too much, which will have you racing to your best race is way too early. Last thing you want to do is be fried at the end of cross country season. So especially if you train for 5k or 8k or 10k, these things matter. So this is why I kind of break it down into sections of four weeks for periodization, for adaptation. So if you found this helpful, hit the thumbs up. If you want to go over, go over this video, let me know. We can do a zoom, whatever you want. Okay. If you want to help customizing summer based training for your athletes, let me know. Happy to do that too. So, but I hope if you did find it helpful, please hit the thumbs up and please uh, share this with other runners and coaches that you think might enjoy this. But I thank you. Great. Have a great week. Have a great summer. Train hard, train smart, and I will talk to you next time.